Hello beautiful and welcome to this video. So today I want to talk about value systems and value systems that need to be discussed prior to when we are committing, when a woman is committing or a man is committing to engagement or marriage. And a lot of times people don't really discuss those issues, those very, very important issues, such as what are each other's values on things like family, time spent together, children, money, extended family, each other's parents, uh, living situation, expenses. So people don't discuss those things. Why? Because as humans, we're conditioned to assume that the other person's opinion and the other person's value system is exactly as our own. So for example, if somebody thinks that, okay, their value system is that if they're married, they're going to be spending a lot of time together. They assume that this is the other person's value system, but it's not necessarily so, right? So I want to talk about what are those discussions that need to happen for you to actually know what is the other person's value system around a certain topic. I recently had a conversation with a good friend of mine and the situation there is that my friend is very ambitious and very much driven, very much wants to better their lives. And their partner is a little bit less so in a sense that they are not as ambitious. They are okay with kind of where their job is, even though they could be maybe striving to get a promotion or striving to increase their salary or maybe try to work more uh, in order to increase their salary, but they're not really striving to do any of that. And they are seem they seem to be okay with where they are. As we were talking about it, it came to, to the surface that my friend doesn't actually know like what is their partner's position on what is their position on money in general? What is their position on where their life is currently, right? So for example, for my friend, it may seem that, okay, this is up and up from here. Like we need to work harder. We need to strive. We need to, you know, be able to like afford certain things in the future and have those experiences and have those trips and have a house and, you know, like all those things. But for, for their partner, you know, it maybe it's not the same and this is a conversation that needs to happen and the easiest and the best question to ask is what does money mean for you right and for all of you listening you can ask yourself this question what does money mean for me right and the answers will be different so for me for example money for me means freedom money for me means that i am able to do things that I want to do. I am able to have the experiences that I want to have. I'm able to go places I want to go. I'm able to travel to places that I'm really excited about, right? So for me, money is freedom, freedom of doing what lights me up. For somebody else, money could be something completely different, right? For someone else, money could be, oh, money is, um, is scarce, money is evil everyone who has money is an evil, bad person. Money is very hard to get. Money is very hard to earn. Money is very hard to keep, right? So there's so many different things that people can believe in. So think about it like this. If, for example, I am thinking about the money uh, in a sense that, okay, money for me is freedom and I have no philosophy around money that will indicate that it's evil in any sense, that it's scarce. I don't have scarcity mentality around it. But let's say if my partner does, then for them, for, for me and this person, it would be a big mismatch, right? Because we don't have the same opinion and the same philosophy around money. And keep in mind also that a lot of times people grow up in different environments, right? Different countries, different upbringing. And this is a conversation and I've seen it especially recently because certain countries, um, they have suffered a lot of different traumas. 
people have suffered a lot of different traumas and their perspective on money could be completely different from you if you have grown up in the United States in a certain socioeconomic level, right? So for example, third world countries and just other countries in general that people who come from that culture, their position on a lot of different things may be very different from yours. And if you don't know that, if you don't have the conversation with them, you'll never find out. And you will always have this, um, this friction with them, this disagreement, because you just don't understand them and they don't understand you. If you're used to uh, having like a bare minimum, and then all of a sudden you're getting so much more than that. And for you, you're, you, you are thinking that, okay, I'm already so lucky. I'm already so fortunate to even have this. Right? So then it's hard to think about, okay, what if I want more? What if I want, you know, more, more possibilities? What if I want more freedom? What, what if I want more money? Right? So for some people, it almost feels wrong to even think about it in that manner because they already know that, okay, like my family is still like in a different country and they have a very different standard of living and I'm here living in this country and I have so much more than they have and what I used to have as a child when I lived there, let's say. So you see how with a person like that, you need to actually find out why are they maybe not as ambitious? Why are they thinking certain way about money? Maybe, maybe in their mind, they're already there. Maybe in their mind, they already accomplished things that, you know, they, they're already so much above what they used to be and what their family comes from, right? And I'm not saying that these things cannot be changed. They can, but you need to understand it in order to be able to even change them or help your partner change those things. Same thing about having conversations around, around, for example, what is your partner's position on family, right? What is your partner's position on how much time they're willing to invest. Like, let's say if your partner is very ambitious, right? They're very successful and you like that about them, right? That's what you want. You wanted a high value man and he, he is all that. But, but what is his position around family? Because maybe for you, you think that he's gonna be coming home at 5 p.m. or right after 5 p.m. and then you're gonna have all this time with him going to dinner, going on romantic walks, going to see movies, you know, doing all that stuff. But in his mind, he's thinking that, oh, because he's very busy and like, let's say he's super busy at work, he's a business person, he's going to be at work till 9, 9 p.m. every single day or 10 p.m. working, making that money. So this conversation needs to happen because if your expectation is that he's going to be home at five and his expectation is that, well, babe, if you want me to make this money, I'm going to be making that money. I'm going to be at work till, uh, till 9 PM. Right. And I'm going to work on the weekends. So this is a mismatch. And I see couples having issues with that. Some women are okay with this, or I know some women have a wealthy husband, but they even travel by themselves. Like I see these women in a very expensive places, resorts or restaurants, whatever, and they are by themselves, but they're married, but their husband is working, right? And for some women, it's okay, but you need to decide what is okay for you. Because if you are getting married for the purpose of being with that person, well, that's a different thing, right? Same thing with kids. Like if you are expecting to have family with this person and what is your expectation? Is your expectation that he's going to be present there for your children or, you know, it's going to be nanny situation or is it going to be just you taking care of the kid and while your husband is working? So all these things would need to be discussed, right? And this is why you need the time to actually get to know this person and have these conversations. I have some uh, people asking me, uh, when you get engaged after rotational dating, based on my last couple of videos, what is the time that you set your wedding uh, from the time of engagement? And it's impossible to answer that question because you don't, haven't done any of your homework yet, right? You don't have any information or at least, you know, maybe you do have some if you provided that, but not all. And it really depends on, okay, how long have you even known this person before you got engaged, right? Because there are different ways of knowing a person. 
You know, if you just went on dates with him sitting in a restaurant or a bar, you know, having drinks and eating and talking, that's totally different compared to if you went on a mission trip with him to a third world country and you saw him in all these situations of stress and you saw how he reacts to that, right? So you are getting to know a person on a whole different level if something like that was happening, right? And then just doing your homework, getting information, watching, watching for signs. I discussed it in my advanced masterclass that I was talking about in my last videos that you need to be watching for these signs and there are certain red flags that you should not be ignoring. There are certain things that you should be watching out for. There's certain information, even financial information, background information that you should be accumulating in order to make that decision. When to actually set your wedding. Right now, if you're asking that question and you don't have any information whatsoever, I mean, um, you know, you might as well go to a tarot card reader because you don't have any information. Just pull some cards and, you know, maybe they'll give you an answer. But this is something that you need to do. You need to find out. And I teach you how to do that in the advanced masterclass. So feel free to check that out. But there are just some steps that you need to take. There are certain tools that you need to use. But coming back to this, having the conversation with your partner, right? Having conversation around important things such as money. You know, a lot of divorces, a lot of conflicts in relationships happen because of your, how you even think and treat money, right? Whether you're a spender, whether you are a saver. So you need to know what your partner is like. If you would like to spend money and your partner is a complete saver and they just want to like save money, you know, you need to have a conversation about it. How are you going to deal with that moving forward? All these things you need to find out. And I do recommend that you don't rush into things until you find those things out. And once you do, you'll be very comfortable setting those dates and setting those um, kind of when you're actually going to get married, right? So again, I do talk about that in my advanced level masterclass. It is on pre-sale right now. So if you want to get it now is a perfect time. And again, I do appreciate all your likes and subscribes and comments that helps the channel to grow. So I do appreciate all your support and I will talk to you guys in the next one. Thank you so much for watching.